Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about generating melodies and we don't need any artificial intelligence or machine learning for this. The only thing we need is the grid and some idea about probability and a few notes. So uh, yeah, let's let's dig in right away. I have a little window here that you probably can't see that I need to move out of the way. So, okay, now it's gone. So first, let's drop in a grid to create a lead sound, which then will be played by our melody generator. Um, probably use the wavetable. Uh, switch over to the unison settings, maybe unison to five. And we don't want to go too deep into sound design. So just leave it at that. Maybe drop in a sign to modulate the phase a little bit, just to give it a little bit more uh, aggressiveness. Turn down, okay, turn it down an octave. And now just mix it in slightly and just listen to, to what happens. Yeah, it doesn't need much, just a tiny little bit, so that gets a little bit more aggressive. Okay, turn on the filter, XP filter is fine, don't need any resonance, don't need key tracking. I do need an envelope. Yeah, for now this is fine. Definitely need a low cut, and then let's add a delay as well. Good. Okay, now let's add another grid. And this time we are using a note grid, which we haven't used too often in the past. And let's remove all these connections. We will redraw them when we need them. So, and... Uh, we could use quite a lot of these modules. We're going to use the pitch module because it seems quite easy to use. Now, obviously, this thing is used to generate pitches. And, uh, well, just a few words on how this device works. Uh, this line here, this represents C1. And when I add a value readout here to see what the value of this note is, uh, let's reduce the number of voices to zero or this uh, sequencer will not play unless I hit the note. Uh, the value here is zero and this device is not broken. It is actually the value of C3. And what this tells us is that when we keep everything in C or C3 or C based, then if we add this to the incoming note, it will not change the root note because, well, if you add zero, then nothing happens. If we go an octave lower, then we will just transpose the incoming note an octave down and it will all be relative to the incoming pitch. And that's quite uh, important. But um, yeah, C3 is up here and I want a little bit more space up here to draw in notes. So I... I'm going to use this one, which is C2, and then, uh, not oscillator, um, octave, octave, add an octave, and now we are at C3 again. Uh, and I'll wire this up to the pitch output, and let's connect the gate so that we can actually hear something. Without that, no note will be triggered. Okay, let's see if the pitch works. Yeah, fine, that seems to work, but of course that's not what we want. Uh, we also need to trigger a few notes. We don't want just one note, we want many of them. So open the prefix and add an arpeggiator. Uh, preferably the one we created in another tutorial. I will link the video 
because this allows us to just generate patterns on the fly. And now let's listen to it. Okay. Well, 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 that's not yet synchronized. What am I doing wrong? Something is off. Ah, yeah, obviously. I need to add the incoming note to the note that we are generating here. Uh, we do that by hooking this up. And before you let go, hold the control key. And now these two values are added. OK, now this is not synchronized, so we have to fix this. It probably would be if I hit stop and play again. Yeah, it would, but uh, we're going to find a different solution. Actually, we're going to turn this internal sequencer or phase off and then provide it from the outside because this allows us to drop in a scalar in between, which then allows us to control the ratio and thus uh, the speed. And because we use a phase signal, we will still have a fixed pattern that will be generated. Although we don't know, uh, it's more or less unpredictable what will be generated when we uh, modify this ratio parameter here. But once it is set to a fixed ratio, the pattern will be repeating and uh, we will see that in a minute. And that's actually the key to generating these melodies. So now when I hit the low, yeah, it just pitches up and down really, really fast, which is not desired. So. What we want is to hold a value whenever a gate signal comes in. So whenever a note is triggered, we want to find out at which value the this device is at or what, what it is currently emitting, and then hold this until the next trigger signal comes in. So um, and we can do this by picking up a sample and hold. from the levels section. And now let me add an oscilloscope to visualize this real quick. I mean, now we have a value of zero. And when I add a button, whenever I activate the button, it will take a snapshot of the current value in this device and hold it until another signal comes in. Why is it not happening? Ah, OK, well, the problem is that we only have two notes, so the probability of it being somewhere else other than the root note is, is relatively small. And actually, I want to distribute them between uh, the lower and the higher octave. This is just to set the probability that uh, we have uh, of, of, of notes being triggered. And now it probably happens a little bit more often. But you, you guys have already seen it, what happens. And now we don't need a button, of course, we want the gate signal to actually trigger the sample and hold. And now let's listen to what, what that does. Okay, that already sounds quite different. And yeah, I can now generate different melodies which contain all of these notes by just uh, adjusting the ratio parameter. Yeah, and actually it doesn't matter which notes you move up or down, it's just probability and of course the melody will sound a little bit different when you move different notes. Okay, that's already nice. So this is the core of our melody generator, but now 
I also want to quantize everything so that I don't have to worry too much in, in what kind of scale I place these nodes. And we'll find this device in pitch. Yeah, drop it in here. And I'm currently at a G, G minor scale. So let's light up these notes. This should be the G minor scale. Uh, this is the root note. And usually the note just above the root note is a little bit weak. I mean, not necessarily. Sometimes you need it, of course. So, but But let's remove it. And now just draw in some, some random patterns and hold down a note. Now you can hear something when I transpose the note. Uh, at the moment, because we add the notes after the quantization, uh, or the, the, the offset after the quantization, it will just take this entire thing, uh, picture and transpose it up or down. So the result might or might not be in the scale you're currently playing in, which is something you might or, or might not want. But if you want everything to be quantized into the scale, no matter which note you're holding down on your keyboard, you just have to pick this plus device and actually throw it in before uh, the quantizer. So now if I connect this and uh, transpose the note, it will uh, play different notes. It will transpose uh, quite differently. can come up with. Okay, that's beautiful. And yeah, no AI needed. You just, yeah, draw in a few notes here in this canvas and well, then we can, of course, use the arpeggiator here to generate some different patterns as soon as I hit play, because that's how this uh, sequencer gets triggered. I can just generate different patterns, which alternates the note length. And even, yeah, you can even add some static transposition, for example, at the end of each bar. Or whatever. Uh, something else we can do is, well, let me make it a bit smaller so that we have enough space. Uh, duplicate this device, and then before we go in here, into this octave, we... Uh, let me find it real quick. Uh, it's in the mixer section, I suppose. Yeah, here, the, the merch. Yeah, let's connect this to the octave and the lower one as well. And now we only need a way to switch back and forth because maybe after one bar or two bars or whatever the interval is, I want a, a different pattern to play or a similar pattern, which just slightly differentiates from uh, the other thing. So let's get the gates and the gates will then uh, switch to the second input. 
in a certain interval. And for now, I just want four. And let's get a transport. Transport. Okay, this is relatively easy to understand. I mean, you can just think of uh, we have four steps. You set this number to the number of steps you have in here, and then select the length you want for a step. Maybe a second note. Turn the internal sequencer off. And now it's advancing with the division you have set here. So now every single time we arrive at this point, it will play a slightly different melody, which makes it a bit more interesting. solo this one. Yeah, let's generate some different stuff here. Yeah, it's pretty simple, and I think, yeah, the melodies are definitely not kind of, I don't know, completely polished and finished, but uh, it's it's a very good idea generator, and once you, you know, have this device and you have something that you like, just generate or create another channel, route the MIDI through it, record it, and then adjust it to your needs, and of course you can, you know, add more of these devices and alternate between them to have different endings every four bars every eight bars or or whatnot uh change the quantization change the number of notes you want to be included in in your melodies sometimes it's helpful to reduce them to for example remove these notes as well <laughs> Yeah, um, that's actually all I wanted to say this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, comment, subscribe if you liked it. And yes, yeah, see you next time.